this is indirectly you are bribing the voters. But the fellow is angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I don't think so. You know, one hour, one IC could could uh, <laughs> could. The law does not allow all that. All these things. Yeah. And and mm. plus also, mm. listen. Uh, see, Monday is a public holiday, and the government has given a public holiday. And uh, this day is not only for you to just uh, chill out and, and drinks and all <laughs> these things. And this is the day where all the voters, 100%, they are supposed to go and vote and watch. Because that is a very, very important that everybody should watch. And because of this day, free day, well, if you have to stand in a queue, queue for an hour or so, I don't think you are, you are going to have more than one hour, one and a half hour. I think that is the, the least you can do for our, our nation. Uh, our nation deserves your most uh, valued vote, and I'm sure that you will be able to do that. And I expect that uh, everybody will follow rules and regulations. They are abide by everything. Even you know that I was told 99,000 police forces are all deployed. <laughs> and they, they are fully prepared, and uh, they say that uh, zero, zero percent tolerance. There won't be any nonsense will be there. And uh, so I, I think everything will work out so smoothly mm -hmm. and according to the rules, all what, as a voter, what you have to do, mm -hmm. make sure that you go and watch and uh, uh, as soon as you finish your watch, go home. Ladies and gentlemen, we are taking a short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll be looking at the tallying processes and other processes that will accompany this function or this uh, exercise on Monday. We are, we are speaking to Beatrice Odera, Acting National Executive Secretary of the Kenya Episcopal Conference uh, at the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission, together with Dr. Hasmu Kawal, educational social worker and uh, philanthropist on the topic matter, Election 2013 Voter Education, sponsored by the Ministry of Justice and the Kenya National Integrated Civic Education Program. When we come back, we'll be looking at the voting pattern, the voting, the, the tiling process, and other processes that will uh, and uh, accompany the exercise on Monday. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking to Beatrice Odera, Acting National Executive Secretary, Catholic Justice and Peace Commission, together with Dr. Hasmu Krawal, educational social worker and philanthropist on the topic matter, Election 2013, National Civic Education. Uh, Beatrice Kenya is predominantly uh, um, a Christian nation with 80% being said to be Christian. There's a very large constituency you know, to provide a proper education on this peculiar voting pattern or peculiar voting uh, situation that we are encountering on Monday. How would you rate, uh, because you are the na acting national executive secretary at the Kenya Episcopal Conference, that one of your mandates well is to uh, educate Kenyans, particularly members of your, of your faith, on what they should expect of this. How much have you done and how receptive are they to this kind of education? Thank you, Mr. Fashuge. You are right, you are right. The church actually is a major stakeholder in the whole process of, of elect this electoral process. And the church, in fact, from 2007 to 2008, from what happened, the church just went back to the communities that were affected. Yeah. And they have done so much uh, peace uh, community dialogue meetings, and they have done so much in terms of helping even the IDP. They have done so much in, in terms of, help, of bringing the people together so that at least there could be that uh, peaceful coexistence. The church uh, also has done so much in terms of civic education based uh, on the content of the constitution uh, during this uh, time of implementation of the constitution because so many laws have been passed that are going to help us now as we go to the election. Mm -hmm. And the church has been part and parcel of that by making sure that uh, it's faithful are aware of what is happening. So they have been actually uh, carrying out civic education based on those con uh, on the content of the constitution so that there could be that better understanding mm -hmm. by our people. The church has also gone further to uh, carry out what education in terms of telling people how they can carry out themselves, how can they, how can they take actions of, of themselves, how can be, they can be responsible citizens. First, when we, when we went to the registration, we remember that uh, it was very low uh, turnout when people came to a voter registration. Mm -hmm. And it was quite low to the extent that even IDC became worried. 
I remember that you are, you are being called by IBC the last two weeks to a deadline of elections, I mean of registration. And they told us that the church is a major stakeholder. And we all promised to, to, to what we could do when we went back to our uh, particular institution. When we went back, we made sure as a Catholic church that all our parish priests were able to tell people, please take, uh, go up and, and go out and register as a voter. Because if you don't register as a voter, you're not going to vote and they're not going to help us as Kenyans, they're not going to help yourself as a Kenyan. So for you to be a responsible person, you must uh, register, you must vote, so that at least you are part and parcel of this process. So we really helped, because in two weeks' time now, we could see the number that had already doubled uh, what, what we had previously. So the church is a major stakeholder, and uh, even in terms of uh, working together as churches, we have worked together so that at least people can see that we are working together as churches, mm -hmm. not only as Christians, mm -hmm. but also even with our fellow uh, Muslims. Yeah. I've talked about Elog. Elog, we are there as, uh, as uh, Christians, we are there as Muslims, as Hindus. So we are all there so that we uh, can see faith-based organizations. Right. Right. And also there have been also interreligious uh, uh, meetings and so that they can work together, so that people can see or Kenyans can see that even our, our interreligious people are also working together for the better of our country. Mm -hmm. So the church is a major stakeholder and they know it and they have actually taken up the initiative to tell people that this is the right way to go, this is our country, please let us keep peace, mm -hmm. let us participate, and also to have that constructive way of, just not, not, not constructive way of, 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 of uh, making us be responsible Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Let us not look at our leaders and we forget ourselves that we are also part and parcel of the whole process. You mentioned that you've also done uh, some peace building processes within the hotspot area that yes. uh, uh, clash has happened. Yes. But as we talk now, we've just seen uh, the news that uh, police spokesman Mr. Wino saying that some leaflets are doing round in Kisumu, Limuru, uh, Naivasha, and people have been cowed and people are actually going up country to their real homes. What say you to this? I, I, I may not, you know, you can do something and you may not get 100% result out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But what I can say, the church has really tried to be in those areas. If I talk about Eldoret, you know what Bishop Corrine has been doing in Eldoret, right from the time of, of election violence up to this time. If you go to a place like uh, Malindi the other day, when we had these issues of Malindi, the church took it upon itself to see how the communities can come back together. And we're happy to see the progress that is happening. So you may be able to, to do it, but you may not be able to force those who are not able to listen to what you are telling them. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about 90% uh, or 80% rate of results, then I think that's but good enough. Would you say that the church would be willing to go back to the same places and, and pacify the tension power that is building? Not really. We'll be able to go back. They're already there. Something's already being done. Every day, every day, they're doing something. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that they stopped. It's not a one or two that they didn't no. left. It's a process that is going on. It's a process that may not stop. Yes. And that's why all our initiatives, we are saying, what are the activities before, during, and after elections, mm -hmm. based on our land uh, experience. Okay. Yes. Dr. Awal, mm -hmm. voter booths or the voting uh, polling stations have been closed. What happened? Oh, all right. Once uh, at 5 o'clock. It is 5 o'clock. Uh, at 5 o'clock, but still, if you are standing in a queue before 5 o'clock, I'm sure that you'll be allowed to vote. You won't be chased out. Okay. Uh, so once the last water has already watered, and then the booths will be closed, mm -hmm. and all the waters and the public will be asked to leave the booths and go away. But there are all the other people, the observers and all the officers will remain there. And immediately, immediately at 5 o'clock after the booths is closed, the voting will start. Mm -hmm. Now the voting will start the, the process. The first, let me run very, very quickly, because I know we have got a lot of constraint of the time and yes. we yes. have to talk a lot about these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, what they are going to do, that they will open the president box first, that white box, because they're not going to open all at a time and start cutting and then again it will be all, all messed up. They will start in, in, in line, presidential white box, they will open it, they will count it, and if they find that there is any, any reject uh, things, they will keep it one aside, and there could be some disputed, uh, uh, you know, ballot paper as well. So there, well, with the consent of all the uh, okay. agent and uh, all the other people, uh, the officers, they will be able to decide whether this vote is valid or not valid. So that process will go on. And then the second they will open is the MP's box, that will be green color, uh, the, the national parliament uh, 
the, 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 the National Assembly, uh, the election uh, ballot mm -hmm. box. And the same process open. will go on. The and then process. it will go on with the county assembly with the, and the ward representative, then the Senate will go, and then the county women representative uh, will be there uh, with, the, with all the purple, and the governor's award will be the last, which will be in color in blue. So once all this thing is done, and when all the observers and the, and the agents, they are satisfied that it has been done according to the, the rules and regulations and there is no any fault whatsoever it may be, they will all sign that yes, they have seen and they witness uh, that process has been done without any, uh, sorry, with all the fair mm -hmm. and without any other uh, uh, irregularities. They will sign the thing and then it will be handing over to the, the result. Uh, the result will be announced again uh, via, via mobile phone and you know that there will not be any inter uh, intercept of the result transmitting uh, via mobile phone. The, you know, Safari uh, mobile, the, you know, Safaricom, they have made very special arrangements that nobody can hack also. There is a special coded uh, wording uh, while they are going to transmit uh, the result to the main tele station which is going to be here in, in Bomas of Kenya. Yes. Uh, and as far as the presidential result is concerned, they are going to transmit that. And at the same time, uh, well, as far as the constitution, uh, the, the counties and other, other elective positions are concerned, well, then the county returning officer will definitely tell you all the, all the words and they are, they, he's going to announce. This therefore means that there are different telling yes. centers yes. for different, like the presidency will be at Bomas of Kenya, yes. the central, mm -hmm. but probably every county will have their uh, yes. Yes. But at, at the, the same time, they are also going to send it to the main telling yes. center as well. Uh -huh. And once this process is already over, uh, well, uh, then uh, uh, the, the announcement of the results, or all the local level, county level, uh, they will, uh, you know, the, the presiding officers will be announcing the results, and they are going to give the hard copy to all the stakeholders, uh, either agent and all these things. They are going to pin the results in the in the polling booths also. And uh, the presidential results, now that will be announced only by the chairman of IEBC. That is his priority. Uh, hopefully everybody is asking question. When, the, when we start counting and it's even first priority, I think so to my, my, my gut says that less than two days, the presidential uh, uh, been tallied and will ready be tallied for. and oh. it is ready for the announcement. And once the chairman, uh, IEBC, We'll, we'll make sure that everything is in order. Uh, he is going to announce the result immediately. Yeah, just but to add to yeah. that, mm -hmm. it is important for us to also make our viewers, viewers know that uh, before the results are actually uh, taken to the telling center, the presiding officer will actually have it uh, text, uh, on, on the telephone, on, on his or her telephone. Mm -hmm. And she, she or he will share this with all the people that are going to be at the telling center. Or at the polling station. So that the right result the is last transmitted. The right is transmitted. Yes. The, the right result is transmitted. So only when they are all uh, okay with that, then is able to transmit it. Again, we, we are also uh, here to tell people that the law says that we are going to wait for results up to seven days, one week period. So let us not say that after two, three days now they have delayed, now we have started asking no. The law is providing a seven days waiting period. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very uh, very, very that period, yes, we are going yeah, to do, yeah. do that thing. Yeah. And that is a, that the, the you know, media will be constantly, uh, you know, what, what the result is being, result right. is being fed yeah. in the main telling station. The media will be there. They are also going to uh, inform beam. inform the public what is happening yes. from which center, how, how the result has been. We have, we have less than four And it's there. only IBC that will be allowed to use, to release, release the result. Nobody, no other institution will be able to, to do that. Yes. yes. We, have, we have less than three minutes to go, yeah. and probably this is uh, an exercise of monumental proportion in terms of uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, giganticness. And, and I do believe that uh, IBC has done the best they could. But in your view, as people who have worked with them, do you think the IEBC and any other agency that is entrusted with this responsibility are equal to the task? Uh, let me start by saying that I really appreciate that the efforts have been made so far. We work very closely with the IEBC, and I think uh, they have tried their best. We all know where we are coming from, and we know that it is a, a new institution coming in with all the staff members and all that. 
I think I would rate them somewhere above average. Well, I'll be complimented. I I, IBC, definitely they have done not only a good job, but professionally they have done every everything they have taken into, into consideration. They have, they have uh, done every stone, whatever is possible. I would like to only uh, tell the Vanaichi uh, in a message that please go to what nothing is going to happen. I have assured and I'm going to reassure you again uh, that uh, all the things, everything is in place. As far as security is concerned, they are in place. As far as the judiciary is concerned, now it is completely reformed under the leadership of Chief Justice. Uh, it has been, they are thoroughly prepared, everything for the election. Uh, in case if somebody is not happy, they can go to the, to the judiciary. And uh, overall, each and everything, even, even the penalties, you know, those who would like to play foul, even, even the, the you know, commissioner of IBC or the waters, when the penalty is so heavy that you will be fined one million shilling and six years of imprisonment, and both even it could happen to you. <laughs> and if you are officer, then in addition to that, uh, well, you will not be able to take part in government in the next 10 years. And so, therefore, I don't think so anybody, anybody, he may, whatever criminal mind he has got, or whatever motives he has got, I don't think that it is worth for him to come and do all these things mm -hmm. uh, uh, out of the, the, the law. Uh, and in my opinion, Vanayichi, please be rest assured that this is a landmark election. This is going to be a perfectly well done and there election. will not be anything and we are going to, this is a landmark and the Kenya will set the history and let the world will be able to applaud that look, this is where let people Well put, Dr. Ari. We are running short of time, our time is up. Beatrice, you have two seconds. Uh, your last, uh, the closing remarks. Yeah, thank you so much. I just want to uh, talk to our, my fellow Kenyans. I want to tell them to come out on uh, Monday to come out early enough so that they can be able to vote early enough, go back home and watch the process through their uh, TVs. I kindly keep peace. This is our country. It is only us who are able to uh, uh, protect the gains that we have made so far as a country. Mm -hmm. It is important to keep peace. It is important for our children. It is important even for our old parents that are here that are really get scared and, 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 and threatened out of our actions that are not really good for humankind. So please, Dr. Please Wall, please. one second. Yeah. One second only. You see, what I'm trying to say, we have been talking about the waters and the violence and all these things. My appeal to all the candidates, whether it can be President Senate or anybody else will be there, that please, in case, if you feel, uh, if you have lost the election, please step down very gracefully, and this is the best favor you can ever do to the country in order to stop all those things what we are fearing. And... Uh, that is all my plea to the candidates, not to Wana Inchi, that please step down. In case if you have issue, please go, go to court. court. Don't go to the, uh, the street. Did I say more? Probably not. Well articulated, well versed. By the end of the program that we come to, you are very well educated on what to expect on Monday, the 3rd of March, the 4th of March, 2013. We've been having bitteries. Odera, Acting National Executive Secretary, Kenya Episcopal Conference at the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission, a member of the steering committee of the Kenya National Civic Education Program, with Dr. Hasmu Krawal, educationist, social worker, and philanthropist. And as they rightly put it, the honor is on you as